APA referencing. It stands for American Psychological Association. I'd like to think that if we learn it right, we won't be in the need of seeking out professional help. Let's see how we go. As musicians, we need to know APA referencing because it's a way to acknowledge honestly the ideas of others that we use. So in a way, it's like respecting copyright and we want others to respect our musical copyright. And so we need to uh, respect the ind intellectual property rights of writers uh, and filmmakers and other creative people who help to inform our ideas. Let's start with an APA reference list. I've chosen the artist Sting and I've looked at some reviews of Sting. The great thing about Sting as a subject is that enough reviewers absolutely despise his music that they tend to write really pithy reviews uh, with quotes like this, he's just a bit smug. Or over the page, he veers towards hammy at times, laying his Geordie accent on a little too thickly. Still, it's all ship shape. Those are quotes from Helen Brown reviewing for The Telegraph. So, if I'm going to use some quotes of Helen Brown's, or even just some ideas of hers, I need to reference her in the reference list. So we start off with her surname, Brown, comma, H for Helen, full stop. And then we leave a space. Now we look at the date in which she published these uh, views, which is 2013, comma, September 20, end bracket, full stop. Now, what did she call her review? I can see here it's Sting, The Last Ship Review. So what I do here is I go Sting with a capital, and then I have a comma, which shows that there's some kind of subtitle. So the first title is Sting, and then The Last Ship. So I'm going to go capital The, and now I need to move down to a new line. Now, because this is the second line of my APA reference, I tab myself in, I indent, and I have to carry on. So, her review was called Sting, the last ship, comma, review. So, I've got Sting, comma, I'll go to a new capital for the, but notice this, the last ship. That's lowercase. So, what I do is something called sentence case. So every time I have a new subheading or heading, I use sentence case, which means just like a sentence, I capitalise the first word and the next words are not capitalised. Sting, the last ship, comma, which just means I've got another subheading, review, so that gets a capital. Sting, the last ship, review. So the Telegraph is the newspaper that this came from. And so I need to acknowledge that. So with italics, I write the telegraph. And because that is the main publication of which this little review was just one part, that gets all capitals, the telegraph. Full stop. And now I need to give a URL. So if somebody wants to check this review out, they can go straight to the website that I found it on. So I say that I retrieved it, retrieved from, and then I've got the full URL. And most likely this is actually going to last a lot longer than I've got space here. So I'll go to a new line, and then I have to put in the full URL right down to the very uh, last thing. So right at the end. I've got HTML, and I need to type out that whole thing. So following on from Helen Brown is Kevin Catchpole. You'll see I'm following the alphabet. Brown comes before Catchpole. And writing in the year 2013, space the month, October, space the date, the 10th, close bracket, full stop. You'll notice that most often between each field we have a full stop. We've got the title of his review which is Sting and then a colon, so we're going to a subtitle, so I'll capitalise again, but I'll be sentence case after that, 
the, and then last with a small L. I have to go down to the next line, so I indent in. Ship. Full stop. So his review is called Sting, colon, the last ship. Uh, now I go for that larger publication. I've decided that Pop Matters is more than just a blog. It is a review website, so I'm using exactly the same format as I used for the Telegraph newspaper. So Pop Matters is capitalised. And they have a funky thing where Pop Matters is actually one word and the capital M is there, so I'm going to respect that by imitating it. Pop Matters, full stop. And now I need to give the URL, so I go space and then retrieved from. And then I'm definitely going to need a new line, aren't I? And underneath ship here, I put the HTTP. Of course, I could just copy this from my browser so I didn't have to write it out. But we need the full URL all the way through to this one ends with a forward slash. So just to go through again, Kevin Catchpole in the year 2013, the month of October and the day of the 10th, uh, wrote a review called Sting, The Last Ship. Uh, he wrote it in a publication called Pop Matters. I retrieved it from this URL. The next resource I'm going to reference is this DVD, which has uh, a title, Sting, and then subtitles, Inside, and then The Songs of Sacred Love. Now what's interesting about a DVD like this is that it contains live performances of Sting songs, for example, Shape of My Heart, but it also has documentary material where Sting and the musicians sit down and talk about what it is that they do. So, as far as APA is concerned, in part, this DVD is a collection of Sting songs. So Sting's the author, and the record label, A&M Records, uh, has released it. But on the other hand, this is a motion picture. For the interviews, uh, probably the director has sat down with Sting, asked him a really good question, uh, filmed it from an interesting angle, edited it together, and so what we're crediting when we talk about the interviews is the motion picture side of things. So in fact the author is not Sting, the author is a combination of the producers and the director of the film. So there are two different layouts for motion picture and for a musical work on DVD or CD. And I'm going to give you both of them because they're both valid. On the motion picture side of this DVD, we start off by crediting a group of producers. There are four of them. And because there are four, I actually need to put their names individually. If there were six of them, I could do the first one in the alphabet, and then I could write et al, meaning and the others. But because they're four, they all get a mention. And I go surname, comma, first name, initial, dot, and then a comma to separate, to go on to the next producer. Then we have Kim, comma, a dot, comma, Nunez, comma, e dot, and comma, and then fam, c dot. And then I have to say who they are, or what their role was, so that's producers. So that's my first line, actually, just filled up with producers. Frankel, uh, Kim A, Nunez E, Fam C, in brackets, capital P, producers. By the way, I got all this information from a website called imdb.com, which is Internet Movie Database. And I get a lot of my CD information for APA from allmusic.com. Those are two really useful websites for doing your APA. Particularly if you don't have access to the album covers or if some of the required information isn't even published on the album covers or DVD cases. And now tabbing in, I credit the director. So I do one of those funny and signs. And then I credit Mr. Gable. 
I believe it was Jim Gable, space, who is the director in brackets, full stop. Now we do the date of release with a space after the full stop. It was the year 2003. And then in italics, sentence case, I do the name of the release, in which case this was the DVD. So in italics, sting. Then there's a subtitle. Now I got these colons from imdb.com. The CD case just uses design to show what's a subtitle and what's a main title. So this was, I thought, quite a useful way of doing that in written form. So it's called Sting colon inside. And then there's a dash, which will go down on this line. And then I start another sentence case. The songs, still in italics, of sacred love. Now, I need to say what it was, which is a motion picture. So I go out of italics, after a space, and in square brackets I put motion picture. Close brackets, full stop to show the end of a field of information in APA. Now I put the country of origin. Notice I don't put the city which is what we do with non-US based books. We put city, then country. In the US we put city, then state. Uh, for movies, we just do country. So that's uh, United States, and then a colon, and then I have the uh, studio, or studios, and this was a combination of RFD productions. I don't need the word productions, I can just say RFD, and, and Universal was the other movie company involved, and then full stop. Now let's go to the scenario in my writing for this very same DVD. I'm actually referring to a musical performance of a song on the DVD. Now our author changes. Sure there was someone controlling a camera and recording the audio and producing it, but the author that I'm mainly talking about, because I'm discussing the song, is the songwriter. So we have a completely different format. Sting. He doesn't have an initial because his stage name's Sting. So he just gets a full stop. The release date of the DVD was the same. It was 2003. And then we have... Uh, let's say I'm discussing the song Shape of My Heart. I'm going to write shape. Notice I don't use italics because a song off a larger publication like a DVD or an album is a small part of it. And italics are only used for large publications like full books, like albums, like films. So shape of my heart, not italics, sentence case. And then I have the word on to show, well, where was this published? It was published on, and then I have exactly the same as I did before. Sting, colon, I'll go to a new line, tab in, inside, still keep my italics, then a dash, my subtitle, so I go to a new capital, the Songs of Sacred Love, in sentence case. Now, I need in square brackets, and rather than put motion picture, I'm going to put DVD. Full stop. Now, I'll go to city and country, just like I do with a book or with a CD. So my city, now I'm actually thinking of the record label here, I'm not thinking of the movie company. The record label A&M is based in London, England. And then I go colon, and then I have A and M. I'm never very good at doing those and signs, that'll do. A and M, full stop. 
So that's a much shorter layout, isn't it? So it's less technical than the motion picture layout for exactly the same DVD. But what I would argue is use this format if you're talking about a song performance where the main author is Sting. But if you're writing about perhaps Sting responding in an interview, then really it's a documentary film aspect you're talking about. So the author is a combination of the producers and the director of the film, and so use that longer layout. So it's horses for courses. In researching this APA resource, I found an amazing YouTube upload. It seems to have been some kind of television special from late last year. It was probably uploaded illegally. But the legality of the upload isn't so much my concern here. My concern is how we use it in a piece of writing and how we legitimately reference it. So in the case of something like a YouTube upload, actually the YouTube uploader is the author. Now, if this person had a first name on YouTube, I would do a comma and then do their initial. But this person is just called Martin. And so that's all I can do. I then have the upload date because this, in a way, is when that link was published. So you see it sort of works in the same way as a newspaper publishing. And we have the same layout as a newspaper. We can actually identify the day so we don't just do the year, we actually do year, comma, month, space, date, end bracket, full stop. Now we have the title that Martin gave this YouTube video. Because it's not an officially published work, we don't put italics. Uh, a YouTube upload is considered slightly more informal than a main publication. So I don't use italics, I just go straight up and down, and I use sentence case. So regardless of whatever capitals Martin used, I ignore them, and it's Sting when the last ship sails. And unfortunately, he's got a whole lot of numbers, and I need to write them all out perfectly. So if you were to go to YouTube, unless this link has been taken down, you could search for that title with that number as well, and you'd get that file. Now, I need to say what it actually was that I was accessing. So that was a video file. So I have in brackets here, video file, close bracket, full stop. I tab in again because I've got a new line and I have retrieved from and then I put my full YouTube URL right up to those last junky numbers right at the end. This video file is a live performance and Sting talks on the microphone between songs. What's interesting in the writing is when I quote Sting's talking my author that I cite is actually Martin, it's not Sting, because the whole idea of the reference list is to locate a publisher by which you can see that publication that I've quoted from. So in fact, Martin is the author in terms of APA, but of course he wasn't writing the script that Sting was following. The rest of my Sting reference list is made up of individual tracks from CDs, or CDs themselves. So let's look at how we reference those. We'll start off with a CD. Uh, really, probably, I would say, the best Sting album, 1987. Uh, the album, Nothing Like the Sun. Now because it's an album, it's that larger published work. So we use italics. Sentence case, nothing like the sun. Then I come out of italics for my square bracket and say that it's a CD. I then need to credit the record company and its location. So I'm going to say space, then London, 
comma, I'll have to go to a new line, so I tab in England for the country, then I have a colon, and then the record label A and M. Full stop. So that's if I'm talking about the album in its totality. What about if I want to talk about one particular song on the album? Let's look at that. We just insert something in here. My composer is still Sting, and my release year hasn't changed. Now I have the title of the song. Because the song is a small component, it's not given italics. I'm sure with this repetition you're starting to get this. So the song is the small work, a little bit like the review title was the small work and the newspaper was the larger publication. We've got the song rock steady, you notice that sentence case there. And then we have the word on to show us where we locate it. And then we go to italic sentence case. Now what is nothing like the sun? It's released on CD, so I'm going to put a space here, come out of italics, square brackets, capitals, CD, full stop. Now I go, just like usual, to the city and then the country. I tab in for my second line, London, comma, country, England, colon, and then the record label, A and M, full stop. So that's the song, Rock Steady, on Nothing Like the Sun. From 1987 by Sting, released by A&M in London, England. One final point on APA reference lists for music. Obviously, Nothing Like the Sun was released on CD, but it's been released digitally. You may have got it from the iTunes Music Store. Do you need to learn those APA reference forms, which are getting invented as the technology changes? I would say not. The purpose of APA is to connect somebody to a copy of what it was that you read or listened to or watched. They don't need to use the same method that you used. So I would argue that stick with the CD layout because it's a very well-known layout. We know exactly what we need. We don't need to go looking for some kind of layout for a digital download. If something is only released by digital download, obviously we have to Google that particular APA layout and solve that. And generally, we will innovate on a form of APA that makes the most sense, particularly with new downloading technologies, which are changing. Our distribution models are changing. APA is innovating to keep up. And sometimes you've just got to use common sense and use the closest match you can to existing APA forms. The organisation I work for has access to a library database called ProQuest. Databases like this can be invaluable because they tend to bypass what fills up a lot of the World Wide Web, which is content designed to sell to us rather than to inform us. So if we're using a database like ProQuest, here's how we would lay it out. And I found a, a good article on Sting, The Last Chip, written by a Mr. Wood. You'll see that the layout here is uh, very newspaper-like. I've got 2013 and then comma, then the month and then the day, close bracket. Now this particular article has a massive title and unfortunately I just have to write it out in sentence case. And yes, that's the full title. Great White Way Awaits Sting, some punctuation, restart the sentence case, the last ship, punctuation, capital the, the British singers, first Broadway musical, comma, so I'll restart the sentence case, is set to open in the fall, full stop. Now that is from the Los Angeles Times, but we're accessing it through ProQuest. So now I credit the Los Angeles Times here, and remember, newspapers get all capitals and italics, full stop. 
And then all I need to say here is retrieved from ProQuest database. Full stop. Interestingly, ProQuest does actually have a site function where if I found something that I like, I can click on a button and it will print me out some APA that theoretically I can cut and paste into my writing. However, I did have to format some things to make them compliant with the dialect of APA that is used by my learning organisation. APA is a language and there are variations and so go with the style that has been adopted by your institution and just ignore it if you see external websites and guides which uh, have just slightly different variations. So here we uh, have a full month whereas the ProQuest Auto site APA generation called November NOV and interestingly it actually gave the full URL whereas uh, our guide tells us it's fine if it's from a database just to say retrieve from ProQuest database as opposed to the URL that ProQuest actually prints out. Wikipedia. Yeah, I get it. I get why it's valuable, I get why it's unique in that it's a community approach to knowledge generation and sharing as opposed to an institutional ownership over knowledge and publishing. However, I really do recommend that it's the last place that you look for decent musical information for your writing, simply because when I went looking for a Wikipedia article, just so I could show you the layout, what I found was vastly inferior to uh, the newspaper websites I went to, to ProQuest and other reviewing sites. Anyway, I found uh, a good example of a Wikipedia page that has no author. So we have to use the title of the Wikipedia article, which is actually the title of a new song that's been included in the last ship stage show called What Say You Meg? It's not a published work, and anyway, it's a small song, so it's not massive, so there are no italics. It's sentence case, but Meg is a proper noun. That's a name, so it'll always have a capital, but everything else is lowercase apart from the start of the sentence. Uh, the year is actually the Wikipedia last updated date, which was 2014. And now, because Wikipedia is so changeable, I need to say when I accessed it. Retrieved, and then I have the month of February, then I have 14, uh, and I tab in, of course, 2014, comma, and then I have from Wikipedia. Now just before I put the URL in, I just want to show the date format, month, space, day, comma, year, comma. Notice that that's different from when we had newspapers, and that's because newspapers starts with the year of authorship and then adds on the other details afterwards and they go inside that bracket. This layout here, month, day, comma, year, is for when I access the file as a researcher. So that's why there's a different layout. It's just a different section of information and our dates for authorship always start with year. And for books, we don't even put days and months, but for website publications like newspapers that do have daily publications, we do put the month and then the day. So just, we've got to learn that difference. So from Wikipedia, and then I'll have a colon. Then you put the whole URL that you can just cut and paste straight from your web browser. I've just put a dot, 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 because I didn't write the whole thing out. If you want to check out the quality issue yourself, go to the page What Say You Meg in Wikipedia, and just have a look at it. When I looked at it, it had spelling mistakes. It was incredibly brief, uh, not very informative just not a quality article. So that's where Wikipedia is really limited by the number of people that are interested enough in that topic 
and are able to structure it in a way which is accurate and informative. So how does my final reference list look all typed up? You'll notice on the left hand side are my authors going down in alphabetical order. I list them in alphabetical order, not in the order in which I mention them in my essay. A print review from the Telegraph here, so we've got that daily date in there, we've got the sentence case with a, a new capital after each punctuation, the Telegraph in italics, great big long URL, everything tabbed over that's not the first entry. Uh, then we have the Pop Matters review, exactly the same format. Then we have Sting Inside the Songs of Sacred Love, which was our DVD. And we've got the layout which acknowledges the directing and producing of it. Then we have our YouTube video, Sting When the Last Ship Sails. Now we start to have some CDs. So we go into Sting as the author because we're looking at his music released on CD. And we've got tracks off Nothing Like the Sun. We've got the album Nothing Like the Sun itself. Uh, and right at the bottom here I've got the Soul Cages as an album. You can tell that's an album and not the song called Soul Cages because of the italics. And because there's not the word on. That when you name a song, you go, this is the song, full stop, and then you have on, and then you have the name of the album. Scrolling down a bit further, I've got another CD track. Then I've got the DVD performance of Shape of My Heart on that same film, Sting, Inside the Songs of Sacred Love. So that's the layout for when I want to discuss the song by Sting that's on this DVD, and not the interviews or other documentary material which is counted as a motion picture part of that DVD. Uh, more CD tracks, we've got Sullivan's Guardian review here. Uh, we've got our Wikipedia, so we say just what's a you Meg, because we don't have an author. Uh, and then we have year, then we have the date I retrieved it. And down the bottom here we have our ProQuest database search result, which was an article from the Los Angeles Times. We could always find it on the Los Angeles Times and then use the same layout for newspapers. But the ProQuest layout is nice and simple because we don't even have to use the URL. We just direct the viewer to ProQuest and expect them to access the article through ProQuest. Now we come to the writing. This is the tasty bit. This is the bit that we've all been waiting for. This is how we use the resources that we've referenced. I've set myself the task of creating about 500 words. I want it packed full of uh, citations which lead to our reference list items. But I want to keep the emphasis to be on what I have to say and I don't want massive quotes which tend to hand over the discussion to those reviewers and other writers. I want to be the main writer. So let's have a look. I've started off. One of those idiosyncratic projects is how Sullivan 2013 describes Sting's most recent album, The Last Ship 2013. Now those two 2013s here are part of two citations. So the brackets indicate a citation, and that's a cue to the reader who's interested in that idea to check the reference list. So if they like this idea of an idiosyncratic project, they'll look in the reference list for Sullivan in the year 2013. So that's what you must have in a citation. The author's name and the year that they wrote. The second citation, you'll see I've got 2013. Who's the author? Ah, I've used Sting's name in my writing. So that works as a citation. All I've got in the brackets is the year, and the reader will look for the album, The Last Ship, and how they'll find it is look for the author, Sting, because I've mentioned his name there, and the year 2013. 
He is doing a reasonable job of method acting. I don't actually state specifically, but that's actually Sullivan. They'll find that under Sullivan, so I haven't independently cited that. However, the brevity of Sullivan's review, there we are. I've used Sullivan again to really seal the deal that those words are Sullivan's. The brevity of Sullivan's review in The Guardian suggests that while, quote, brave and touching, the album leaves her comparatively cold or at least uninterested. I'll just point out there that in talking about the brevity, the shortness of the review, I'm applying some criticism to Sullivan's review. It doesn't mean I don't like Sullivan's review, I'm just noting that she didn't feel the need to invest a lot of time and a lot of words in her review, which suggests that she may have been a wee bit cold to the project. Over at the Telegraph, Brown, 2013, there we are, so I've got the author's name, so that's where you'll look on the reference list in the year 2013. Brown invests many more words in coming to much the same conclusion. The colon says, what is that same conclusion? Sting is an actor who, quote, veers towards hammy at times. So if you like that quote, you'll go look up Brown, and my reference list tells you where to find the Telegraph article. Pop Matters, Kevin Catchpole, 2013. This is the first time I've used a reviewer's first name, and I did it just for variety. I don't have to put their first name. I can call someone Brown, Sullivan, but I've just wanted to mix it up a bit. Pop Matters, Kevin Catchpole, in 2013, finds it, quote, nice to hear Sting emote with his voice outside of his comfort zone. However, and this is back to my words because the quote's ended, however, it's questionable whether any artist would want their life's work described as, quote, nice, especially Sting, whose legendary self-confidence can come across as smug. Now, at this point, I'm going back to an idea of Brown's in the Telegraph. Because I've had other citations around here, I've chosen to separately cite that. And do you notice, because I didn't use Brown's name in my writing, I need to include the surname Brown with a comma in my citation bracket, plus the year, and then I finish my sentence. Sullivan, Brown and Catchpole are emphasising Sting's departure from the confessional songwriter model. This is telling me to use a Z and emphasising, I shall not. After a decade filled with music but empty of songwriting, Sting wondered if he had, quote, lost the mojo. The name Wood is inside the citation brackets because I haven't used the name Wood in my sentence. But, he says, and to introduce the quote, I'm using a colon, that's a newspaper style and I really like it. That gives me the option to use a capital I, and do a full sentence with my speech marks. So what does Sting say? It turns out I just needed to stop writing about me. Now because that's a full quote, my full stop happens and then the quote mark closes. So my internal full stop here actually ends the larger sentence outside as well. I don't put another one in there. Sting dedicates his lyrical efforts on The Last Chip, no citation there because I've already cited The Last Ship as a 2013 album by Sting in my previous paragraph, so no need to duplicate. He dedicates The Last Ship to singing the songs of fictional characters. This form of acting is not entirely absent in his prior albums, however. The Shipyard references are an obvious echo to 1991's The Soul Cages. I've got my citation, Sting wrote the album Soul Cages in the year 1991. Because I've got the year 1991 in my sentence, I don't need it inside the citation. Notice that I've put italics on the album title, and I've chosen all capitals. If you look at my reference list, you'll see according to APA, I use a small s and a small c and use sentence case here. But in my writing, I like to capitalise the titles of albums because it just looks better to my eye. Comparisons can also be drawn to Nothing Like the Sun, Sting, 1987. His reworking of the story of Christ's resurrection in The Last Ship, 2013, 
can be compared to his 1987 innovation on the story of Noah's Ark in Rocksteady. Now, what indicates that these are songs that I'm talking about, The Last Ship and Rocksteady, is my layout. I haven't capitalised everything, I haven't italicised, I've gone for that small work format from the APA idea, and I've put single quote marks around my song titles. I think that's a really good way to go. The really key thing is not so much what choice you make with your layout, but that you're absolutely consistent. So you'll find in my writing, songs are sentence case, non-italicized, single speech marks. Albums are capitalized, italicized. Quotes from song lyrics or from interviews or writers are double quote marks because I'm actually quoting someone's speech. Here we go, The Last Ship. Now I'm talking about the album. I'm not talking about the song, The Last Ship. The Last Ship's quote pugilist, I'm quoting his lyrics now, Who Learned How to Dance? That's by Sting in 2013. As a character who is proudly refined, dapper, and dedicated to the task of overcoming his isolation, is rather like Sting's Englishman in New York of 1987. We'll unpack this a wee bit. That square bracket is to show you that I have inserted a word to make my wider sentence make sense. The uh, song lyric is pugilist learned how to dance and I've inserted the word who so that my sentence works. You'll see sentence cases used here but New York is a proper noun, that's why that's capitalised. Finally, Could Not the Secret Marriage, that's a song, isn't it? Sting, 1987, be called A Practical Arrangement. Sting, 2013. I just want to point out when we have a question mark here, and then we have a citation. This is different from what I've done above. Look at this, I've done my citation and then I've put my full stop to finish the sentence. This is because a question mark really needs to be beside the words that it's colouring. Just imagine if this is be called a practical arrangement, end quote, then the citation, then the question mark. What the question mark starts to imply is, I'm not sure the citation is correct. <laughs> so a question mark always needs to go next to the words that it is colouring. This argument, of course, assumes that anybody cares enough about song lyrics, and indeed about Sting, to analyse the nuances of his song lyrics. Readers of The Guardian and The Telegraph may well do. Sting's co-writers in the last Chip Broadway musical certainly do, as evidenced by their axing of one of Sting's beloved characters. Who was that? A romantic old dreamer who has, quote, clearly lost the girl. And that's from the article on Wikipedia called What Say You Meg 2014. So you'll see I've enclosed my citation within my punctuation and ended my sentence afterwards. I don't have an author because remember that Wikipedia article didn't have one. So I put in speech marks just a few words from the title of that Wikipedia article. The Wikipedia article was What Say You Meg? I've decided in my writing there's no need to write the whole title because that's going to start to disturb the flow of my writing. But this cue of What Say in speech marks tells you, look, it's not someone's surname, but look under W in the reference list and you will find that article and be able to check it out. Full stop. Leave a space, new paragraph. On the contrary, even within Sting's own band are musicians who care little about what he says. Long-time guitarist Dominic Miller. Can I just quickly point out here, the guitarist is our noun, Dominic Miller. These are adjectives, long time. And because it's a, a phrase that's being used as an adjective, I have hyphenated it. Long-time guitarist Dominic Miller admits he doesn't, quote, listen to the lyrics much. That's my great big long citation for the movie version of that DVD, because that was an interview part, which is a motion picture part. So I've got my four producers 
and my director. Notice no initials, just surnames. And the year. This is humorously proved during filming when Miller can hardly sing one correct verse of Shape of My Heart. Sting, 2003, end of my sentence. However hammy the acting, Sting's The Last Ship does have an undeniable ring of truth to it too. Can you hear here that I'm starting to round off, to conclude, I'm looking for the big picture truth that we can draw out of this. The undeniable ring of truth to it. What is that? That's what that colon says. I've said there's a ring of truth. What is that? A songwriter raised in a shipbuilding town in the north of England can sing about his past with authority and authenticity. Some may not like his, quote, thick brogue, which is the accent Catchpole and many others have been teasing in their reviews, 2013. But in Sting's own words, colon to introduce the quote, set it up as a full quote, so my punctuation will go within my quote marks. When I think about the environment I was raised in, comma, these streets and this ship are such a huge part of our identity, part of who we were, and I'm fiercely proud of it. Because I finished the sentence within the quote marks with the full stop, because it's a complete quote, I put my citation just afterwards with no punctuation, Martin, comma, 2013. And my concluding line, it's unlikely any music reviewer will put a dent in that pride anytime soon.